Mudding the Firebox of a Homemade Forge, William Hovey Smith, 2016. I am the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives from China, and this small forge allows me to do a little tempering and experimentation on my knives. This is Hovey Smith with Hovey's Outdoor Adventures, and today we're having adventures in ceramics. We have built us a new forge over here, and it's going to need a clay lining to keep the bottom from burning out. Now what that is, is welded up from an old automobile tire and a piece of salvaged steel pipe and put on a steel base with some appropriate entrance holes for air and a clean out door in the bottom so I can get the ash out. But about the clay. Uh, not any old clay will make a good ceramic, but we do have three varieties of clays here in Washington County that when combined will. And these include kaolin, an expanding clay, commonly known as Fuller's Earth, as well as our regular, familiar, good old Georgia red clay, and sand. And this can be used to make a ceramic mix that will not crack when fired, hopefully. At least that's the desired result. Now I've already gone out and done some gathering. Yep. And this is what the raw material looks like. This is the Twix clay. And it was gathered from a location about half a mile from here. Then, a little further down, we also gathered some kaolin which is a white clay, right here. You'll notice this has sort of a greenish tinge to it compared to this, which is quite white indeed. Okay, so this is a kaolin clay. Now when you work in clay, what you want to do is get the particulates as fine as possible before you start mixing water with them. If you have lumps like this in your mix, it will spoil it. So hence this plate and this rod, and I'm going to actually grind just like you would roll out dough right here to get it very fine. And then over here, we have some very fine sand. It is discolored with iron oxide a little bit, but that's no matter. And we have, of course, our familiar Georgia red clay from down at the road right below the house. So with this, we're going to make a ceramic. Well, this is how the red clay component is turning out. Uh, as you see, it's rolling out pretty good. Now there is some grit, some sand in here. This is a sandy clay, rather than being a pure clay. And you can actually hear it. You can hear the little sand grains. Now we need to have some sand in this mix for structural strength of the clay itself. But I think we have just about enough and the way you can tell just rub it between your fingers and you should feel a little abrasion from fine sand particles remaining and we're looking for in this particular clay a silt sized sand so yeah we've got it now we do have some coarser fragments too which are not desirable and this is how we're running now with the total amount of clay. You can see this is a white clay over here, our expanding clay. And this is literally clay. Uh, there's very little sand in here. And then this is a predominance of our red clay and sand. So this is about right for the mix that we're going to go after. But we're going to do one more thing before we add water. That is, we're actually going to sieve this to remove any of the larger particles and little bits of organic material and other impurities that have gotten into our clays. We've now got it ready for sieve. So we'll see how we do here. And if this looks like the ordinary kitchen sieve, yeah, that's exactly what it is, folks. 
Now you can see, yeah, we would not want that in our ceramic, so that's much too coarse. Like in most things you do in life, the better your preparation, the more likely your result is to turn out well. So yeah, that would cause us grief if we tried to mold. Now you can see the white clay is coming up. All right, now we'll see if we can need a little bit of this by hand. But no, that's feeling too solid. Okay, this is going to do. We have the clay at a good consistency. And we now start making it up so we can lay it in. Too much to try to hold in one hand though. Okay. Take some excess here off the top. Fill this gap. I'm going to sort of make a coil here. Okay, not pretty, but pressure fit to the mold. So this is as firm as it's going to go. And so now we have the firebox of our forge built. Here is a look at our mudded forge. Now as you can see, we're starting to have some rather severe cracks coming through this clay. This one is almost a quarter inch wide. The rest of these are here and here and as you see and are probably growing because this clay is not completely dry. What we're going to do with these large cracks is to take this pallet knife and make up a mix of another kind of clay. Now this is kaolin clay. I mentioned it to you before. This is our white clay and that's a pretty good kaolin by the way. What we're going to do is to take this clay and we're going to mix it with some dry sand and make another mud and force it down through these cracks after they have completely dried. And we'll know they're dry when they turn about this color. This is maximum dry here. After that, we will take more dry sand and just pour sand over the bottom of this, including the metal grate. And what that will do will be fill all of these holes further as well as protect the clay from abrasion from any metal tools. 
Now that is about as fine a looking fire as one would think we, one would want to have. And that is about ideal. There is still just a few fragments of unburned wood in there, but we're not going to worry about burning up every last little piece of it. As you see, I'm making more charcoal. And that fry pan on the top contains the sand that I am drying. On our adventures in charcoal making for the forge, now this was wetted last night from my cooker. And so I've now had it air drying out here and we've had some bright sun. So this is starting to get dry. It's not completely yet. Well, our sand in that fry pan is certainly dry enough to take off. But you don't grab that frying pan by the handle. Uh, not unless you want third degree burns instantly. So we have our welder's glove. And we're going to put some extra padding on it. And we're going to take it off and just put it on top of the forge. And let it stay there until it's thoroughly cool. We are now concluding with our adventures in ceramics. And making up the kale and sand clay. For filling the holes left by drying from the mudding of our forge. And this is the lump of kaolin, and I have crushed it. Right, yay. And now we're about to grind it and sieve it. We have our temporary workstation here. Two concrete blocks and a stainless steel sheet. And this will be disassembled and repurposed as soon as we get through with this phase. I'm now sieving out the sand. Now this has a tiny amount of clay in it. And you can see how some of it is sticking together just a very little bit. But we want to get rid of all the coarse particulates. Indeed, as you see, we had some. For this amount of clay, uh, that is more than enough. And now we're going to sieve the whole thing together. nearly well mixed we have it the better twice just because we can any good baker of pound cakes will tell you this is necessary we have our clay sand mix we're going to start slowly adding some water it happens to be rain water it's free and we're going to see what kind of clay we got Now we have about a baseball size piece. Now if you got dry, if this is dry and you got whomped on the side of the head with it, <laughs> I guarantee you, you wouldn't like it much. to work without cracking and splitting. And that's what it's doing. I'm 
Okay, I think I can work with that. You can see some of these large cracks. So we're going to remove our grate here. Take our clay. Roll it out. Very thin little ropes. And push it down in. not a process that can or should be delayed. The more that can get just force down into the cracks of butter. The more abrasive and the rougher the substrate, the better the kaolin is sticking. Okay, so now we have the holes repaired and we're going to layer a layer of sand on the top of this. So this evens up the bottom of the forge, so we have uniform burning characteristics. If I rake a metal tool, it's not going to tear up the clay. And everything should be copacetic. So tomorrow, we will have fire. Our mudded forge, with its reinforced sandy bottom, is now coming up to heat. It's got its first load of charcoal in it. And I'm just depending on natural air draft now with the door open and not using forced air. But the charcoals are getting started. They'll pretty soon be up to working temperature. So yeah, we're about to get this thing in use and that's going to be in future videos. But now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Some ads about some of my books follow, but stay tuned because there's some valuable information about how the ceramics work. I have a series of business books under the Profit brand. Among these are ideas for new businesses, and here's a little blurb about me and the book. And Hovey's Knives is one of these, by the way. 
And backyard deer hunting is one of my outdoor titles. And others include extreme muzzleloading, crossbow hunting, and practical bow fishing. And all of these have things about knives and cooking in them. Although I came by it independently, this mudding of a forge can be a very valuable tool for preserving the life of a lightweight forge. Now, you can also use it to repair a forge, perhaps, if the bottom is not too badly gone. For more information on my books and blogs and more than 500 videos, go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye. And God bless.